How often do you think the numbers you see in headlines are truly giving you the full picture? Imagine a world where numbers are not just digits but tools used to make sense of the complexities of life. One of these tools is statistical significance, a concept seemingly shrouded in mystery yet widely used across numerous fields. From the realms of medicine to the world of finance, statistical significance plays a crucial role in decision-making. It's a mathematical way of determining if a particular outcome is a mere fluke or if it's something more meaningful. However, despite its prevalence, it's often misunderstood or misused. A number deemed statistically significant can be mistaken as the end-all be-all, obscuring the bigger picture. It's like trying to understand the plot of a novel by reading only one page. But how reliable is this tool? Is statistical significance always significant? Let's delve into what statistical significance really means. Imagine you're flipping a coin. If it's a fair coin, you'd expect to get heads about half the time and tails about half the time. But what if you flip the coin 10 times and get heads 8 times? Does this mean the coin is biased towards heads? Not necessarily. This is where the concept of statistical significance comes into play. In statistics, we often start with a null hypothesis, an assumption that there is no effect or difference. In our coin example, the null hypothesis would be that the coin is fair. Now suppose we get a result that seems to contradict our null hypothesis. We got heads 8 out of 10 times after all. But is this result just a coincidence or is it statistically significant? To answer this, we use something called a p-value. A p-value is a probability that measures the strength of evidence against the null hypothesis. In this case, it's the probability of getting 8 or more heads in 10 flips if the coin is actually fair. If this probability, the p-value, is very small, we might reject our null hypothesis and conclude that the coin is biased. But here's the catch. Just because a result is statistically significant doesn't mean it's practically significant. For instance, if a medical study finds a statistically significant difference in survival rates between two treatments, but the difference is only half a percent, is that really a practical difference? Statistical significance tells us about the likelihood of our results given our null hypothesis. It doesn't tell us about the size or importance of the effect we're studying. It also doesn't tell us whether our result is due to chance or whether our sample is representative of the population we're interested in. So, we've learned that statistical significance might not always be as significant as it sounds, let's explore why. Statistical significance has its fair share of critics, but why is that? Well, one criticism is that it can sometimes be misleading. It's a mathematical tool that helps us decide if a result is likely due to chance or not. But this doesn't always equate to real-world significance. A study might find a statistically significant difference, but that doesn't necessarily mean the difference is meaningful or important. It could be a very small effect that has little impact in practical terms. Another criticism is the issue of p-hacking. This is a term used to describe when researchers manipulate their data or their analysis until they find a result that is statistically significant. They might try different statistical tests, exclude certain data points, or stop collecting data once they reach significance. This is a form of bias and can lead to false positive results. Then there's the problem with binary thinking. Statistical significance is often used as a cutoff point with results either deemed significant or not. But reality isn't so black and white. A p-value just above the threshold isn't necessarily meaningless, and one just below isn't necessarily profound. It's a continuum, not a dichotomy. And finally, statistical significance doesn't measure the size or importance of an effect. It simply tells us whether the effect is likely to be due to chance. But two studies could have the same p-value and very different effect sizes. One might show a huge important difference while the other shows a small trivial one. The p-value alone doesn't distinguish between these scenarios. These criticisms highlight that while statistical significance is a useful tool, it's not the be-all and end-all. It's not a magic bullet that can unequivocally prove a hypothesis or an effect, it's just one piece of the puzzle. Clearly, there are limits to what statistical significance can tell us, Let's delve deeper into these limitations. The limitations of statistical significance are often overlooked. Let's bring them into focus. Firstly, let's talk about the dependence on sample size. Statistical significance is heavily reliant on the size of your sample. A larger sample size increases the statistical power, and thus, the likelihood of finding a statistically significant result. However, this doesn't mean that the result is practically significant or meaningful, 
It's like finding a needle in a haystack. Given a large enough haystack, you're bound to find a needle, but that doesn't mean it's full of needles. Now, on to the next limitation, the disregard for practical significance. Statistical significance can sometimes be misleading because it doesn't necessarily imply practical significance. You see, a result can be statistically significant, meaning it's unlikely to have occurred by chance, but it might not be practically significant. In other words, the effect might not be large enough to be meaningful in a real-world context. It's like winning a lottery ticket worth $1. Yes, you've won, but does it actually make a difference? The third limitation lies in the potential for misuse. Statistical significance can be manipulated or misused in a number of ways, such as p-hacking or cherry-picking data. P-hacking, for instance, involves repeatedly testing a data set until a statistically significant result is found. Cherry-picking, on the other hand, involves selectively presenting data that supports a desired outcome. This kind of misuse can lead to misleading conclusions and poor decision-making. So, in essence, while statistical significance is a useful tool in research, it's not without its limitations. It's dependent on sample size, can overlook practical significance, and is prone to misuse. Understanding these limitations is crucial to interpreting and using statistical findings responsibly. These limitations paint a picture of the reliability of statistical significance. Let's bring it all together. So, how reliable is statistical significance really? As we've explored throughout this video, statistical significance has its share of criticisms, shortcomings, and limitations. While it can provide valuable insights, it is not the be-all and end-all of data interpretation. It's a tool, and like any tool, it has its strengths and weaknesses. Let's take a moment to recap. We've talked about how statistical significance can be criticized for its dependence on sample size. Larger samples can yield statistically significant results, even for minor differences that might not be meaningful in a practical sense. Conversely, smaller samples may overlook significant differences due to lack of power. We've also touched on the issue of PE values. The p-value is the probability of obtaining a result as extreme as the observed one, assuming that the null hypothesis is true. However, it's not a measure of the size or importance of the effect, nor does it tell us the probability that the null hypothesis is true or false. Moreover, we've discussed the limitations of statistical significance. It's not a measure of effect size or practical significance. It doesn't tell us the why or the how behind the data. It doesn't take into account the context or the broader implications of the results. This brings us to the key point, the importance of context and critical thinking when interpreting statistically significant results. We must remember to consider the bigger picture. What are the practical implications of the results? How do the results fit in with existing research or theories? Are there other factors that could have influenced the results? In conclusion, statistical significance is a useful tool in the toolbox of data analysis. But it's not the only tool, and it's certainly not the most important one. It's a starting point, not an ending point. It can point us in the right direction, but it's up to us to explore further, to ask the right questions, to think critically, and to make informed decisions based on a holistic understanding of the data. Remember, statistical significance is just one piece of the puzzle. It's up to us to look at the bigger picture. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest content.